Hi everyone, how you doing? So uh, I've just got in from work and I thought I'd go out into the garage. It's pretty cold out here, but there's not much else to do to be honest. Uh, got plenty of work still to do in the car. I thought I'd give you a little update as well. Uh, today or this evening I'll be putting the wiring loom back in the car, but I found some interesting things while cleaning up and repairing the wiring loom. Uh, I think some probably bad misdiagnosis in the past, some unnecessary money spent on the car. Uh, I'll cut to that in a moment, but uh, I did encounter a problem when I come into the garage. It appears it's been taken over, so you'll see what I mean. So for some reason, my garage seems to have been taken over by Father Christmas, so uh, I can't even get to my workbench at the moment. So uh, give me five minutes and by the magic of video, uh, I'll make a trail. Okay, so that's the uh, garage now sorted. I could get in here and start doing a bit of work. Um, so yeah, we're just about ready to uh, put the wiring loom back in now, start wiring it back up before most of the major components go back in. Um, so as, as I sort of said in the previous video, uh, one of the things I did while the wiring loom was out was just go through the whole lot, um, repair any any dodgy connections, clean up any corroded connections, sort out any insulation, um, you know, check all the plugs, uh, make sure make sure it was all good to go basically and will last another 20 years, which it is now. But I did find a few problems along the way. Uh, I think one thing that probably started this off was uh, when I bought the car, uh, I picked it up. The uh, the guy explained to me that he'd just spent uh, quite a bit of money on a on a uprated heavy duty battery for the car, um, which ordinarily not really a problem. Um, when I had a look at the battery that had been fitted, it it was an 075, which is is way too big for a mini. Um, and contrary to popular belief, actually fitting a battery that's too big for a car is is can be a bad idea. Uh, what basically happens if the battery is too big? Uh, it never gets charged up properly by the car's charging system. Uh, the voltage will sit too low and what will happen is that battery will sulfate uh, because it's not fully charged. Uh, and eventually that battery will die, it will die prematurely. So fitting an overrated or you know, uh, above standard specification battery is, like I say, can be a bad thing. It can cause the battery to die prematurely. Um, I also noticed a couple of other things as well. So uh, the car had a, a relatively new looking alternator on it. Um, so we've had an alternator, uh, we've had a new battery. And I did notice, I've taken it off there now, but uh, I think connected between the bell housing here and up by the bonnet stay was uh, a big additional earth cable. Uh, it wasn't the original Rover one, someone had added it afterwards. So. Again, didn't really ring alarm bells at the time, but it kind of makes sense now. So um, one of the things I've done when uh, putting everything back together is that this is the only main earth cable for the Mini, uh, for the engine. And when you think about it, the engine's rubber mounted. So uh, to cut out vibration and make it nice and smooth, the problem with rubber mounting it is there's, there's no earth to the engine. So this is the main earth cable, which earths the uh, body, uh, to the engine uh, and I'll try and put a picture up but all around this area was really badly corroded so it's no surprise really that it was probably getting a bad earth through that connection there. So like I say that's all cleaned up now, uh, it's cleaned up both ends, uh, it's all been painted but I've scraped the paint off underneath so it makes a good electrical connection on there. Um, so that should be fine now, no problems there. Um, if you've got an older Mini, if this cable goes, uh, it's, it does break, it does get a poor connection, the, the engine or the components on the car will just try and find another earth. Uh, and unfortunately with a Mini, uh, the choke cable, the throttle cable, things like that can act as a good earth as well, but they also melt when they're used at an earth because they're not designed to carry that amount of current. So if you've ever had a choke cable melt or burn out, it will be because you have a bad connection uh, on your engine earth here. So um, 
like I say, what was interesting while doing this loom was um, around the starter motor to alternator connection. So it's this wire here. Uh, it travels between the starter motor and the alternator. In fact, it's, it is the main connection. So on a mini, the battery's in the boot at the back there. Uh, there is only one live cable. That live cable travels all the way underneath the car, under the subframe, and it comes out the front here. And its first connection to the vehicle is on the starter motor. There's then a link wire which goes between the starter motor and the alternator up here. And that provides the main power once the engine's running. So when the car's cranked and starting, the power comes from the battery. When the engine's running, uh, the power then is provided from the alternator through this link cable here. So the, it's designed to carry quite a bit of current between that link cable there. Uh, this starter cable, um, it's uh, as you can see, it's quite big. Um, that that will probably carry momentarily, probably four to six hundred amps. But on starting, you're probably looking at a hundred, hundred and fifty amps going down this wire, uh, and and you could probably crank it over for quite a long time. You'd probably flatten the battery before you started melting the wire. But it's quite a high current wire that. So the point in question here is the connection between the starter motor and the alternator. And this is where it got interesting. So I noticed this insulation here had been, it didn't look standard, so I cut it back just to have a look. Uh, and although it didn't look standard, it had been repaired. It looked like it had been repaired very nicely with heat sink and everything like that. Didn't really look a problem. But I was curious, I peeled back all the heat sink because I wanted to see what had been done and I, I was horrified what I found. So uh, I've kept the wire here. So this end here, this is our main power out of the alternator. It's a 60 amp alternator. So shortly after having started the engine or if you've got a lot of loads on there, there could be up to 60 amps coming out of that alternator wire there. Like I say, when the engine's running, that is the only power connection for the vehicle so every every consumer on the car all the electrics are being run from the alternator through this 60 amp cable here and as you can see rather crudely it has been soldered or spliced onto a, a wire which is probably only designed to carry about 15 amps um, and that, that just, I mean, you can see there, but that would act as a massive bottleneck in the system. It won't allow the full charge current to get back to the vehicle systems and certainly not the battery. What, what happens as well is this acts like a big resistor and anywhere there's resistance, things get hot. So this is potentially a fire hazard here. Um, if you'd left a load of high consuming electrics on and, and the engine running, this, this would heat up and eventually burn out. So, but I'll tell you what, 10 out of 10 for soldering there, but... Um, zero out of ten for using your brain and uh, some electrical knowledge there because that really is a is a massive uh bodge up there there's no way no, no way around it so um so yeah I, I would imagine all along uh the cause of the uh the reason why the battery was changed the reason why it had a new alternator fitted the reason why someone had gone to the extra effort to uh, install uh, an extra earth cable down on the engine here was probably all down to um, a, a poor repair having previously been done on this wire there so someone could have saved a lot of money by doing a bit of uh, sensible diagnosis um, be quite easy to diagnose that actually with the uh, with lots of loads on and consumers on you would just do a volt drop test between the battery positive and the positive on the alternator just to see how much voltage is being lost or, or, or see how much ampage is being outputted from the alternator and uh, th that would point you in the right direction so anyway that's a bit you know just a bit of an update for now I've now got to crack on get this wire loom, loom put in there it does look a bit of a mess it's like a load of spaghetti the great thing is about modern, I say modern cars, a Mini isn't by no means a modern car, but it has been updated over the years. Uh, all these plugs are pretty much unique. They only go uh, on the right sensor or the right plug. You can't, you can't really get it wrong. Apart from getting the routing of the wiring uh, correct around the engine, you can't really plug the wrong thing in the wrong socket. So it does make it easy like that. 
if we're working on the 1960s mini you can make a real mess so i've not labeled any of this up i'm reasonably confident that i'll get it all in uh, back in the right place uh, first go and if i don't um I find when sort of building cars, building engines, doing project work like this, lots and lots of pictures really help because it gives you something to go back and reference to when you do forget. So anyway, that's the update for today. And uh, I'll be back soon with a bit more of an update and probably with the wiring loom and inlet manifold on. Cheers. Thanks.